Hey, guess what? It, it, it's not August anymore. New poll is out today showing that Americans are solidly behind the Democrats when it comes to health care. Here are the numbers. 65% of Americans want a public option. That's up five points since August, according to a new CBS News New York Times poll. Plus, 78% believe their health care system needs fundamental changes or a complete overhaul. I like it. Republican leader Eric Cantor, who refuses to come on this program. Come on, Eric. We'll just talk for an hour about what your plan is. Fact is, you don't have a plan. He wrote in Politico, he wants to hit the reset button. I bet he does. They don't have a plan. Congressman Cantor, I'll show you how to hit the reset button. It's like this. I have a very close relative, a woman uh, in her early 40s who did have a wonderful, high-paying job, owns her own home, and was a real contributing member of society. She lost her job. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, she found out that she has tumors in her belly and that she needs an operation or doctors told him, her that they are growing and that she needs to get this operation quickly. She has no insurance. I guess I would ask what the, uh, what the situation is in terms of income eligibility and the existing programs that are out there. Uh, because if we look at the uninsured right now, uh, there is probably 23, 24 percent of the uninsured uh, that is already eligible for an existing government program. Beyond that, I know that there are programs, um, there are uh, charitable organizations, there are hospitals here um, who do provide charity care. You know, folks, I just can't play that piece of tape enough on this show. Americans are one pink slip away from that situation. Americans are one bad test result away from that situation. But Canner's answer to that woman in Virginia is really a Republican pattern of behavior at town hall meetings. This is what they tell constituents. Go beg for charity. Go get in line. Senator Tom Coburn in Oklahoma, he's a doctor. He told a sobbing woman at his town hall meeting to go get help from the neighbors. Coburn was asked about it in a recent interview with PBS. Well, let me ask you about something that happened at one of your town hall meetings. A woman there told you that her husband uh, was denied nursing care. He has traumatic brain injury. We left the nursing home and they told us we're on our own. He left with the feeding too. I've been working with him, but I'm not a speech pathologist, a professional that takes six years for a master's. And I'm trying to get him to eat and drink again. He me so much to me. Well, I think, first of all, yeah, we'll help. Uh, the first thing we'll do is see what we can do individually to help you uh, through our office. Uh, but the other thing that's missing in this debate is us as neighbors helping people that need our help. You told her to turn to her neighbors for help. No, actually what I said is that's unfortunate, but we, uh, what I made the point was is if she couldn't afford insurance and if she couldn't care, is that the federal government's responsibility? You know, folks, how ironic that the Republicans are being taken down by their own town hall meetings. Not by the people screaming and heckling them, but by ordinary Americans who are asking for solutions and finding out that the Republicans, they don't have anything. A hundred days ago today, back on June 17th, the Republicans promised to put out an alternative bill. Today, we have no bill from the Republicans. Here's what the Republicans are spending their time and energy on. Listen to Senator John Ensign's contribution to the health care bill. This is uh, amendment number C-10. It has to do with transparencies in czars. Uh, we are now facing a situation where, where there's almost a shadow cabinet that's being developed. It, it started slipping in there with a czar here and a czar there. She found out that she has tumors in her belly. They are growing. I guess I would ask what the, uh, what the situation is in terms of income eligibility. That she needs to get this operation quickly. This is uh, amendment number C-10. It has to do with transparencies in czars. She has no insurance. Us as neighbors, helping people that need our help. There are uh, charitable organizations. There are hospitals here um, who do provide charity care. 
Well, you just saw it. The Republicans have no solutions. That's that's all you need to know as an American. All this talk about, well, we've tried to work with the Democrats and it's all their bill and it's, there's no bipartisanship. Show up with a plan, folks, over on the conservative ledger. You're making all of us think that you just don't care about people, that it's all about the money and all about profit. Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Do Americans get that Republicans have no solutions in this debate? Text A for yes, B for no to 622-639. We'll bring you the results later on in the show tonight. Joining me right now is Congressman Jim Moran of Virginia. Got to give us an update on the public option in the House. I see that the blue dogs are softening their position a little bit. Congressman, what about that? I think that the Democrats will be there when it comes right down to it. And uh, Nancy Pelosi is a, is a strong leader, and, uh, and she is committed to a public option. And the, the, facts, uh, the, the facts speak for themselves, Ed. Uh, it, it's a no-brainer. But, you know, it's not just that the Republicans have no so alternative solutions. Uh, they have no heart. Uh, you know, th th this is really They're about... They're heartless? Well, uh, this is about caring about the rest of our America. American community. But you should People just say they're, they're, they're heartless. They, they don't care. You Why know, don't they have a plan? I, I, I'm not, I, I'm just, well, if, if they cared enough about the people, that tens of millions of people who, are, who have no insurance, they'd come up with a plan. I don't know why they have a plan. I think it's because uh, uh, they, they feel that the people that are going to be covered uh, perhaps are not their constituents because they're going to lose so when, campaign when, contributions. I don't know what so it is. They can speak when, for themselves. When, when are the, it's disappointing. When are the Democrats going to say, to hell with the conservatives, to heck, you know, let's go, let's go, let's get this done. They're telling people at town hall meetings to go see a charity. They're telling people at town hall meetings to go seek out some program. Why won't they, in your opinion, is it all about beating Obama? Is it all about possibly giving a new president a political victory? Is that what it is? You know, I think a lot of this is a residue that's uh, from an attitude that started back about 1980 that the government isn't your friend, that the uh, government is the problem. This was the Reagan mantra, and it was designed to cut taxes and benefit the wealthy and the powerful. Uh, and people still have that attitude. They fear the government. Heck, there are 110 million people who have government-paid health insurance in this country, country, and they don't want it to change. But, but I want to see some toughness out of the Democrats, uh, and I'll tell you why, because this new CBS New York Times poll, the view of Republicans in the Congress is almost at 60 percent unfavorable yeah when you don't have solutions and you're the party you know why even visit with these folks but you know ed that's not the constituency that elects them they're appealing to their base and it's a near every year it gets a narrower and narrower base uh and a whole lot of the stuff they're putting out there they can't afford it for it to be true because uh it it wouldn't be accepted let me but tell they've you got this right-wing radio network yeah. you're trying to counter it but people are being fed a whole pack of lies well let me let me tell you how out of touch they are the United States Chamber of Commerce. Now, that is an organization that always lines up with the Republicans. Uh, here's what they say. The reality with the business community is that we want reform, while some Republicans want to stop this train and start over. This is not, just not, going to happen. There, there you have Bruce Johnson, U.S. Chamber of Commerce. You've even got one of the most favorable groups for the Republicans, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, is even telling them, Ain't gonna happen. The average insurance premium this year was over thirteen thousand dollars. That's as much as an annual income for somebody on minimum wage. And according to the business roundtable, within a decade it'll be twenty nine thousand dollars per employee. So what our economy can't function. So so, so how how much more ammunition do the Democrats need? I mean, this ought to be done Tuesday, and let's get after it. And what and and you know the blue dogs. The blue dogs got to be paying attention to this too. They're, they're on the uh, on teetering, I think, on being obstructionists. Well, uh, I mean, I'm not going to speak for the blue dogs. I think many of them are going to be with us on a public option. What they would like to see is three amendments to the health care plan when it hits the House floor. One of them would be single payer, another would be public option, another would be cooperatives. Well, that's and uh, they're all going to vote at least for the nonprofit cooperatives, but maybe uh, they'll vote for two out of three. We'll get a bill out of the House. Uh, hopefully, the Senate is going to have a bill. And, uh, and, you know, this needs to be Ted Kennedy's legacy. It's, uh, we don't admire him so much just because.
because he was so hardworking and intelligent. We admire him because he had heart. You've got heart. That's why I watch your show every night. And I think the American people have heart. I don't know. Uh, uh, the Republicans can speak this. for themselves. We are winning this. Well, we got to win. I believe we're. I we got to win it believe, because we care about the rest well, of the country. Congressman, great to have you with us. I believe it's always going to be with you. Jim Moran of Virginia is on appropriations with us here on the Ed Show tonight.